All right. Okay. Philippians 4, verse 7. Let's read it together. Anybody who has it can read it for us. And the peace of God, which of God's own understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ. Okay. Listen to this. This is interesting. And the peace of God. So God has his own kind of peace. Seriously? And the peace of God. You heard that in, and you see that in every epistle of Paul, he talks about, he, start, he opens it with a wish for them, with a prayer for them. And what is that prayer? That they be filled with peace. Ah! You saw in the last one or two segments, we talked about how peace is a living thing. And here we are seeing that peace is something that God generates out of himself and give to humans. Oh, all right, let's see something here. I am going to show you towards, I think at the end of Revelation, you will find somewhere where somebody sitting on a red horse, excuse me, please, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Somebody sitting on a red horse was given a big sword to go and remove, to go and remove peace from the earth. Ah, we are learning something else. So, God plant peace. And so, someone can remove peace. Eh? So, somebody can plant trouble. Eh? A sword stands for either protection, persecution, or destruction. That's what a, stands, a sword stands for. Jennifer, put that down if you are not busy. Please. Please, 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 folk, remember that if you want to purchase uh, materials, product from our ministry, and you do not know how to go online to do it, please call, call this number. Geneva, could you repeat the number, the 702 number? Sure, that's 702 Okay, while the program is on, while this com this public ministration is on, if you want to go and sow a special seed, you don't know how to do it, call that number, give, give the person at the other end your credit or debit card number, and they will just process it very quickly for you, safe and secured. All right, let's continue. In certain traditions of Christianity, a name is given. There is a name given about a particular, a particular um, uh, force or powers of darkness that is involved in removing peace among people. If you and somebody have peace, something could be sent to remove the peace. And when that thing comes between you and that person, it will bring a very big misunderstanding. 
a very big quarrel. It might be over something as little as peanuts or a bag of popcorn or something that somebody said that the other person should just laugh and it will be taken very serious to the point that somebody will be so angry and if the cops arrive, the police arrive and ask what the problem is and they tell the cops what started, the police will say, are you serious? This is the reason why you guys are quarreling over this something as small as this? Say yes. There are two sides to, the, to this. There are people who enjoy quarrels and problems. They thrive. They do well where there is problem. If there is no problem, they are not happy. I know of a woman from Syria alone that told me that if she and her husband do not quarrel, it means that that marriage is not working. That if everything is calm and nice and peaceful and fine, it means there is a problem. So she will, because the husband is not the type that can start a quarrel, so she will go and start a quarrel. I'll give you an example. Why is it that all you make is just 70000 a year? Do you know that your, your, your class are making about a million dollars and you are sitting down here and going to the same old job and a quarrel will break out? She likes that. This is all you buy for me. Other men are buying a Gucci bag, koi koi shoes. You're buying me a, 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 a perfume that just costs $300. While your colleague are buying for their wife the one that costs $1,000. She will just start something. Okay, that's a different thing. There are people who thrive. They do well where there is problem. Where there is no problem, they don't do well. It's like ISIS. Where everybody is behaving, everything is working, government, everything is fine, ISIS don't do well. The Islamic fanatics don't do well in such societies. But societies that are not organized, people are fighting among themselves, they will come in. They thrive where there is problem. Why? Because they are troublemakers. You have to look well at friends, relationships, your business partners, to know are there people who enjoy, when, when things are moving very fine with you, they don't like you. But when things are moving very bad with you, they like it. They want to help you out with chicken change. When you don't have a job, they are, they are willing to, to give you food, a place to sleep, give you a ride, take you out and shop for little things for you. But when you get a job, they don't like it. Because you are going to buy your own car, have your own house, and they don't want it. Are you aware that there are people like that? Just start building a house or buying a house and you will know who are your friends. Just buy a nicer car than the ass. You will know who are your friends. Just get a better job with a better pay, triple pay than their own. You will see who really likes you. There are people who thrive where there is trouble, sadness. If there is none, they don't like it. So when they hear you singing, it is well, it is well, with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well, with my soul. And they'll turn around and look at you and in their mind they tell you, we hate you. You shall be the one crying and not the one singing. God forbid I rebuke them in Jesus' name. 
Listen to this. Listen to this. And the peace of God, that's what you are looking for. That is it. That is it. That is it. You are looking for the peace of God. You want to live. L-I-V-E. You exist in the peace of God. You want to manifest in the peace of God. You want to thrive in the peace of God. You survive and live large, higher levels in the peace of God. And the peace of God, that's what you want. The devil have no peace. If you try to look for something from the devil, you are going to lose your peace. Because the greater desire of Satan is to take away your peace. Because when one peace is taken away from you, life has been stolen from you at that moment. Whether you know it or not. And the peace of God, see what, what how it looks like. Which passes all understanding. What is the meaning of this? And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Who, who, who has... Who can interpret what that means? The peace of God which passes all understanding. What is the meaning of this? Who has insight into this? It shows you how mighty, how deep, how big, how great. This peace is bigger than all knowledge, all revelation that you can even think. If you have it, you have everything. So the meaning is this. If you have the peace of God, you have everything. Can I hear somebody here? Because hallelujah. 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 If you have the peace of God, it's like your name has been written on a check. That has all that you need. Go and get it. Amen. Hallelujah. Which passes all understanding. Hey! All understanding is bigger than you, is greater than you, is beyond you. This is huge. This is powerful. This is prosperity. This is personality. This is influence. This is health. This is big laughter, like Jesus loving. This is it. This is the big life. The peace of God. That's what you should be pursuing, is the peace of God. Pursue the peace of God. If ever you fall out of his peace, go back into it. Don't let no shame, don't let no guilt keep you out of the peace of God. Never. Amen. Amen. Never. Amen. <laughs> the desire of Satan is to keep you away from the peace of God, so that the false lions can eat you, can get you. Because if you're outside this kind of peace, you're done. And the peace of God, which is beyond all things, greater than all intelligence, greater than all understanding and revelation. Because if you have this, you will be walking in the air. You will be floating. You will be walking in power. Why is this peace of God passing all understanding? Why is it so? Because with this peace, all things are possible. Amen. See, you've never heard somebody teaching you about peace this way. With this kind of peace, all things are possible. Mountains will move. People will live your life. 
whether they like it or not. The power of God takes over everything concerning your life. The devil will leave you by force. Because this is not a small thing. That's why when you hear suggestions in your head, instead of you rebuking it and finding something else to do, you, you stay there and be crying. Like a little dog whose leg has been broken. T, 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 T. Like a tata. When you start hearing voices in your head, you start seeing problems around you. That's the time you say to everybody, excuse me, I'll see you guys later. Ah, our, our wife, our lady, where are you heading to? Our, 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 our father, where are you? I'm coming. I'm going to see God. You go, you go there and stay there and say, I need to get into the peace of God so that I can find solution to what is happening. Because when you enter into this peace of God, everything that you need to know is given to you. Every revelation is open for you because you are calm. Everybody is saying, ah, what is happening? Look at it. Hey, yeah, they are crying. Like it happened to Jairus. Amen. Jairus is on his way with Jesus. He went and knelt down and worshipped Jesus and said, please come. Come, it has happened. And they were on their way with a whole group of people going to Jairus' house. And people from Jairus' house were coming towards them. Look at that kind of thing. Jairus, a large crowd of people with Jesus are going to Jairus' house. And then as they were going, a large crowd are coming out of Jairus' house to come and meet them. So the two large crowd meet. And they started crying, yeah, your daughter has died. The weepers, the professional weepers begin to, 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 to chant and to, and to, and to cry. When I was in New York, I saw people who are paid to follow a dead person, to follow a, a funeral, a funeral a, 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 a parade or something. You go and sign your you go and sign your name, and they will pay you for a day to cry, to cry for an idiot who was the most wicked fool in the world, and they will pay people money. In New York, they do. You go and pay. You go and sign your name. And they pay you, they pay you some cash, and you follow the line and be crying for the person. I'm serious. There's nothing I didn't see in New York. That's why those who live there, hey, hey, they, they are strong people. See people walking nude in the street. I was asking myself, is this Africa? Or is this is this a, a is this America or is this somewhere? Is this some some place? What is where am I? Is it not supposed to be America? And then you see people walking nude, nudist through the street parading. I said, this this ain't right. You say, oh yeah, that's their right. I say, yeah, they do. They have the right to walk nude as God created them. I said, this is crazy. Say, even in Africa, we wear clothes. And I'm coming here, and they are walking naked. Are you serious? I was in California. I was driving, passing. I saw somebody calling me from the bush. So, you know, for me, I'm always prepared for... So, I stopped by, and I seemed to know the face. I said, what are you doing here by the side of the road? He said, we live inside here. There's a little creek, a little river that flows and they build tents there. And a bunch of men are living there, inside that bush. These are Caucasian people. I say, ah, ah, men, you guys live in the bush. I say, we African, we left the bush a long time ago and you guys are going back to the bush. What's wrong with you guys? He said, yeah, that's how they beat the, they beat the rent and mortgage, they live here. I said, are you serious? You are running away from mortgage and rent. I said, we left the bush. We, we left the bush a long time ago and you guys are living by the bush. What about the snake? 
I didn't know that that is how some people live. Oh. I didn't even know that people, people live in their cars. It was when I went to California that I saw things that were like, I said, we African, we left the bush a long time ago. You guys are going back to the bush? <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that I'm seeing very, what I'm seeing is correct. I told him, show me where. I parked my car. I locked my car. I said, let's go and see where you guys live. Because I know the guy. I saw him in downtown sometime. And I thought he was a homeless person. I didn't know. He's a, he was a retired military man or something. And he has other people. One told me that he has a master's degree and he talked intelligently. I'm not talking about African American, I'm talking about Caucasian American, people of European ancestry. I was so shocked. Until I started seeing how people live in Alaska and other parts of America, people living on top of trees, all kind of stuff, people living in caves. I'm, I'm like, you, you are kidding me. Are you serious? People live in caves? People living on in the tree, build a, a solid house on top of the tree there. Are you serious? I, I don't get it. So I followed them. We entered through. The, there was just a pad, an opening. And I saw their cars parked by the side of the, of the bush. All of them have cars, but they live inside the bush. And I went and I saw their tents the place where they cook. I was surprised. I said, okay, thank you very much. I entered my car, I drove away. I said, this doesn't make no sense. Until I discovered that a lot of people live like that in some states. I said to Fiakwa, God forbid. Ah. And the peace of God which passed all understanding. The peace of God. The peace of God. There is a peace that comes from God. That kind of peace is a permanent peace. It's a peace that creates things for you. It's a peace that allows you to think right and act right and not be broke to go and be living in the bush or in your car. Because a lot of people, they are not thinking rightly. Because they don't have the peace of God in them. Anybody who come to your life to increase pressure and stress, let them go. The peace of God which passes all the understanding shall keep your hearts. Look at it. Shall keep your hearts with an S. Which means your spirit and your mind. Your spirit and your mind. Your intelligence. Your experience. Your memory. Your dreams and visions. Shall keep your sanity. Shall protect you. And protect all that God has given to you. shall keep your hearts and minds. Look at that. So, what really make your life to work perfectly is the peace of God. Ah! So, God's peace is a, a thing. It protects you. Say, shall keep, which means Protect, sustain, maintain. Another word for all this is the peace of God shall bless you and increase you. That's the meaning. So that you are thinking create money for you. Your spirit manufacture ideas into your mind. And you make money, material resources, provide services, you become wealthy. So the peace of God does many things. And we've been taking it as, oh, the peace of God is simply, um, uh, the peace of God is simply, uh, 
Jesus forgiving your sin and uh, you go to heaven. And uh, because Jesus is the peace child, he is the prince of peace. And we read those Christmas story and we close it till the next Christmas. And everybody say amen. Because the, the pussycat has peed on the candle. And that's why you can, no, the pussycat has peed on the match box. That's why you cannot light the candle. And so we all say amen and go. There is this story that is spoken of. Uh, uh, there is this ceremony in the in the in some of the traditions of the church, some some of the denominations, and uh, they will ask one of the church members to come to the altar, and they will be singing, and the angel lit the candle, the angel light the candle, and somebody will come and take the match of something and light it, and in that tradition they will light it with the matches, and the the old man continued to light the, the match. The thing was not working. And the little boy at the back of the church, when the choir sang, and the angel light the candle. And they, they waited. The thing was not working. The matches was wet. And the little boy sang from the back. He repeated, the pussy can be on the matches. <laughs> That's why we cannot have no angel lighting the, the, the candle. The one that really makes me laugh is uh, during Easter. On Easter, you know that in the, in the sepulchre, in the church of the Holy Sepulchre, that is where it is reported that Jesus rose from the grave. You see that it is managed by the Greek Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, all those Orthodox churches. Their name actually is Orthodox churches. And normally, during the exact time, they believe that during the exact time that Jesus rose from the dead, um, an angel will walk into the tomb where Jesus was buried and actually light the Easter candle. And then either a bishop or a pastor will go in there and bring the candle out. So this is real story. This, is, this really happened a few years ago. So... They waited for the angel to come and light the candle. In Jerusalem, it happened here in Jerusalem. The Jerusalem is not in heaven, it's right in the Middle East. They waited for the angel to come and light the Easter candle. They waited, and there were pilgrims who went to Jerusalem to celebrate Easter there. And they waited and waited for over an hour. The angel did not appear to light the candle, which I know what all those crooks, all those crooks in holy gowns do. One of them used to creak slip into that place or they will plant one of them inside the cave and lock him up there and at that time he will come out to come and light the thing and that is what they are doing they've been doing it that this particular year i think he had a heart attack or something he couldn't come out to from where he was hiding inside the cave because all those places in jerusalem are cave 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 inside tunnel tunnel tunnels and i know somebody is hiding in there to light it, and they've been doing it. And this time, the person couldn't do it. So one of the pastors waited for so long, he said, bloody hell, what, what is wrong with all of you? You're waiting for an angel. The angel didn't come to light the Easter candle. I have, I have a, what do we call it? I have a, a lighter here because he smokes cigarette or cigar. I have one here. So he dashed into the cave. Into the into the into the holy tomb, and pick pack, pick the candle and light it and bring it out. Do you know that fight broke out today? They began to fight over somebody light the candle because the angel did not come to light it. Are you serious? Something like that. They began to fight. The fight was serious. I saw it even on YouTube. They featured it. After I watched it on television, I saw it on on the. On YouTube, you see all those pastors fighting. So all those, all those pastors with long, long beards, they were fighting karate kung fu inside, inside the, the holy church. Seriously, they were beating people up. The two groups were fighting. <sighs> Enough of human, human uh, this thing, uh, 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 problems. 
shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, the peace that the Father is extending to you is coming through Jesus. And that is what is going to protect your mind. You've now seen it. So, the thing that God uses to protect your mind, the thing that God uses to protect your spirit, the thing that God also uses to protect your physical body. So it means that if you are, if you have the peace of God, and if you are in the peace of God, it will be difficult for sickness to keep you down. It will be difficult for poverty to keep you down. It will be difficult for all kinds of ugly problems to keep you down. So that is what you must aim at and aim for is the peace of God the Father through Jesus Christ. So while joy is power, that's why those who love a lot, those who love a lot, like I do, they live long. They enjoy long. I'm serious. Because joy is power, physical power. That's why those of you who are coming to Wichita this year for the convention, you are, many of you are going to come under like the, the spirit of laughter. There, there are, there are sp the spirit of worship will come. The spirit of peace will come. The spirit of laughter will come. When God wants to do heavy healings on your mind after some traumas, I'm talking to some people tonight, he's going to use laughter, joy. That's what he's going to use. When he wants to protect you, sustain you, keep you, he's going to use peace. So you, you are, Jennifer, please demarcate this too for me. What he uses, joy, and what joy, what how God uses joy, and how God uses peace. So peace is to maintain you, to keep you. That is why Jesus says, he said, my peace I give to you. We will go to that in the next session. Not as the world giveth. Do not let your heart be afraid. I now know why. Because if you live in fear, you will die many times before you die. You've opened a portal. Those who are not under God's peace have opened a portal for troublemakers to come in. Do not open the door. Do not unlock the gates for troublemakers to come in. Please don't do it. Stay in God's peace. Stay in God's peace. And he will sustain and maintain you. Gracious Father, pour out peace upon your people so that they be protected, sustained, and maintained in their mind. People of God, things are done. If you watch people who sell stuff, even if what they're selling is trash, they will talk to convince your mind. They will show you things to make you respond and buy it. The reason for God's peace is to protect you from people harming your spirit, your mind, and your body. Because when you are in the peace of God, and God's peace is in you, you will be able to think rightly, verify things rightly, and live the right life. I create in you, in the name of Jesus, the peace of God that passes all understanding that is beyond you. I create it in you. I call it, I call it to enter into you and to abide in you. The peace that abides, I call it to come upon you and to change you. Amen. 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 And amen and amen. I'll see you at 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.
you.